Hello and welcome to evening prayer in this Passion Tide and first day of Holy Week. If you'd like to follow along with the words, then you can download a free app from the Church of England. So go to your app store and download the Daily Prayer app from the Church of England. You may have the daily prayer book at home, which you can use to follow the words. Or alternatively, if you would like to just allow the words of the prayer to wash over you, then that is fine too. For those following with the words, anything in bold we say together and we will say the psalm together as well. And so as we begin our evening prayer, on this Monday, first day of Holy Week. Let's just take a moment to acknowledge that God is with us. And God is with us wherever we are. And that through our prayer, we are connected together. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. As we behold your Son enthroned on the cross, stir up in us the fire of your love, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and walk with you in newness of life, singing the praise of him who died for us and our salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 25 To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your paths, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to my sin, for it is great. Who are those who fear the Lord? Them will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their souls shall dwell at ease, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The hidden purpose of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and brought very low. The sorrows of my heart have increased, O bring me out of my distress. Look upon my adversity and misery and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many and they bear a violent hatred against me. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. 
Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading from Scripture comes from Lamentations, chapter 2, verses 8 to 19. The Lord determined to lay in ruins the wall of daughter Zion. He stretched the line. He did not withhold his hand from destroying. He caused rampart and wall to lament. They languished together. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has ruined and broken her bars. Her kings and princes are among the nations. Guidance is no more, and her prophets obtain no vision from the Lord. The elders of daughter Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have thrown dust on their heads and put on sackcloth. The young girls of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes are spent with weeping. My stomach churns. My bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people. Because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine, as they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. What can I say for you? To what compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I liken you, that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen oracles for you that are false and misleading. All who pass along the way clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their heads at door to Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? All your enemies open their mouths against you. They hiss, they gnash their teeth, they cry, we have devoured her. Ah, this is the day we longed for, at last we have seen it. The Lord has done what he purposed. He has carried out his threat as he ordained long ago. He has demolished without pity. He has made the enemy rejoice over you and exalted the might of your foes. Cry aloud to the Lord, O wall of daughter Zion. Let tears stream down like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. Here ends the first reading. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. The second reading comes from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. 
for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. Here ends the second reading. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. By his wounds you have been healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We say the Magnificat together. God's love for us is revealed in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God's love for us is revealed in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we come to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lay before you our lives, ourselves, all that we are and all that we bring. We lay down before you all of our anxieties, our pain, our suffering, our ill health, and all the challenges we face at the moment. In this Holy Week, as we walk the way of the cross, Help us to draw close to you through the story of Jesus. And in doing so, help us to lay our pain and suffering along that of Jesus. Help us to enter into this Holy Week in the way that is best for us. Help us to set aside times to simply sit in your presence, to feel your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world as we 
fight this coronavirus. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our Prime Minister and the government as they make difficult decisions for us. We pray for the leaders of the church, praying for all ministers, ministering in a different sort of way at the moment. Give them strength and courage in all that they do. And we pray for our archbishops, Justin and John. And we pray for our bishops, James and Simon, here in Rochester Diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the sick and the suffering, praying especially for those suffering with this coronavirus. We pray for those in hospital and for those recovering at home. We give thanks for those who put their life on the line every day to comfort those with this coronavirus. For those in our hospitals and for all those frontline workers. We pray for protection on them. We pray for courage in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the anxious and the concerned at this time. For those who are feeling particularly isolated and alone. We pray for those who are struggling with this isolation. We pray for those who are living in difficult circumstances. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our lives. And we pray for all that we bring and all that we are. And we ask for your blessing upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the dying and those who have died. Praying for those who have died from the coronavirus and those who have died for other reasons. We pray especially for families organising funerals at this time in such a difficult set of circumstances. We pray for your love and peace to be felt by them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we gather up all of our prayers and we ask for your blessing on us this evening and in the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility 
and also be partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening for this evening prayer as we begin our journey through Holy Week. I hope and pray that you have a blessed week, however you decide to mark it. And if you would like some more support and help with prayers, then we will be producing uh, different things each day. Um, and you can find those at our website and Facebook pages, which I'll put in the description below. And so, as we go from that, this place, wherever you may be, may you know God's love close by. <laughs>